Yes, God, we open up our hearts to you and we say, God, come and breathe on us. Come and breathe your breath of life on us, God. That's the only way we truly live. Is when you breathe in us, Lord. So God, we open up ourselves right now. I just want to encourage you wherever you are, just if you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. If you can't, just pray out and just and just and just ask God just to fill you once again with his presence. Oh shiabakatashi on boroto shodeya takati. Oh to korobo tuya darababa Yes, Lord, we open up ourselves to receive from you this morning, Lord. There is truly none like you, God. None like you, God. Lord, come and breathe on us this morning, God. We need your Holy Spirit, God. Lord, it's only then when we truly come alive, God. It's only then when we truly have life. It's only then when we truly have joy, peace, and righteousness, Lord. And everything that you have for us, God, is when you come and move within us, Lord. Oh, to your word this morning we just just ask that your peace would just come upon us right now we would be able to hear what it is that you're saying to us this morning Lord it's your opinion that matters most to us this morning what you thinking God that matters most to us this morning so I ask Lord that no matter what has happened in this past week or really in these past few months, Father, all the unsettling, all the unrest, all the chaos, I just ask, Lord, that in this moment, there would just be peace in our hearts and peace in our minds, that we may hear what it is that you are saying to us this morning. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. God, we submit to your word this morning. Come and speak to us, God. Come and speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome in the house of the Lord this morning. It's great to have you with us. Thank you so much to the worship team for such a nice, peaceful atmosphere of worship and also just sense of God's presence. Thank you. Over the couple of weeks that I've been preaching, I've, I've been just sharing about really loving God with everything and, and, um, and also that the most important thing in our lives should be what God thinks about us and what God is thinking about situations. That, that should be our desire and I, I challenged you and I think I've been challenging you uh, the past couple of times I've been preaching, just, just saying, ask God constantly what is on your mind? What, what, what are you thinking? What are, what, what are, what are you, uh, what, what, what are you busy doing? Because at the end of the day, it's all about God. When we stand before God one day, I'm not going to have anyone else voting for me or anyone else saying, yeah, but this and this and this. It will only be me and God. And it's only his opinion of my life and his opinion of my choices that count. And really, in this life, the choices we make do matter. They really do matter for all of eternity. So, so, so we really have to take a look at our lives and be like, God, what is it that you want me to do? Because I want to choose that. Because for all of eternity, that will matter. And I've also looked at that God also rewards those choices that we take in love to Him and, and in obedience to Him. 
So I'm going, to, I'm going to just take a bit of a look today and, and, and really just look at this relationship that we have with God. If I can put a title to this message, it's just Life with God. I've spoken a lot about holiness, a lot about we need to be pure, we need to be uh, really living pure lives and, and not taking the culture and not taking other people's opinions and, and justifying things in our lives, why we do this, why we do that, why are we, why are we living this way or whatever. But we should go to the Word of God and say, God, what, it is, what, what are you saying to me? So we've looked at holiness and I want to start by reading a scripture verse and I want to read from, uh, from Matthew 16 verse 24 and 25 and it says there, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. So I don't know about you, but I want to be a person that finds life. And it says that whoever loses his life for me will find it. So I want to find life. So, so this relationship with God, this life that we have with God, is the way that God has designed us to live. It's, it's where we feel fulfillment in our life. But we read this and we, and we, and we read it, um, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. And we think that it's, uh, it's this command to be miserable. You know, you must deny yourself, it's going to be a terrible life for you, because you must just submit, you must just uh, uh, let go of all fun, everything that you think that is, is good for you and whatever, you, must, you mustn't do that, and it's, you're going to live a miserable life. But when I look at God, and when I look at His heart, when I read His Word, I realize that it's a very different picture. And sometimes we don't get it because in the moment, yes, we, we, we have to lay something down. And yes, our whole lives, we, we are denying ourselves. But we doing it for the glory of God. And He wants His glory to be seen in us. I say to, to couples when I do marriage counseling, and there's, and there's the verses in Ephesians where it says, wives, submit to your husbands. And uh, wives, you need to submit to your husbands. Amen. From, from the husbands, maybe. Maybe. Uh, that's a, it's a tough crowd. Uh, <laughs> That's what the Word of God says. You should be saying, well, wives, you should even be saying amen. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the Word of God. So, um, but then it says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and laid himself down for, for her. You see, as, as a wife, you are submitting to someone who is laying down everything for you so that you can live the way that you should be living. It's empowering you. It's actually causing you to flourish. It's causing you to become everything God wants from you. That's why you submit to your husbands. You, you, you're not submitting like a doormat that he can come and he can just do this, do this, do this. Men, it's not about that. It's not about just having your wives doing everything so that you can put your feet up, as Ricky always says, in front of a roaring wife. It's not so that you can just put up your feet and you can relax so your wife must do everything. It's not about that. You need to love her and lay yourself down for her, for her best. So later on in that passage, Paul goes on and he says, I'm not really speaking about husbands and wives. I'm speaking about Christ and His church. So when we read the Scripture Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. What, what it's saying is, submit to me because I know what's best for you. I know what you need. I know when you need it. I know everything about you. And my heart is good towards you. Every good gift comes from the Father. 
He, he wants all these things. Last week, Zach mentioned that scripture verse, seek first the kingdom of God. And we often stop there and, 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 and we just start, this is miserable. God just wants everything from me. You know, I, I must just give up everything for him. And we almost have this attitude of like, oh, well, I can't give that up, can't give that up because it means too much to me. You, 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 you're not understanding this God that we serve. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek God and doing things His way, righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The context is anxiety and all this worrying about this and this and that. If you want to seek first those things, you will be filled with, with anxiety. You will be filled with with dissatisfaction, you'll be filled with unfulfillment. I can even say that. <laughs> you know, emptiness you won't be filled, you'll be empty if you seek those things. But you seek God first and His righteousness. All these things will be added to you. I want to take you to the next scripture that's found in Romans chapter 14. And uh, this was confirmed in the worship. Adal prayed it just now. Romans 14, verse, verse 17, it says there, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, physical things and all that, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the kingdom that we are under, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is how us as believers should be living is with the righteousness, right standing with God, living the right way in terms of God's eyes, righteousness, peace, where we're not full of anxiety and full of the cares of this world and, and overwhelmed by everything that's going on. I was, I was having a chat to one of the Shannon parents that were at our Foundation Phase prize giving at, um, at Shannon Christian School, and, and I was just having a chat to him, and, and we are talking about the year. So I, I haven't seen him this whole year uh, because of COVID and whatever. So we had this opportunity to talk. And, um, and, and he was just saying, you know, everyone's fretting. Everyone's like so anxious. Everyone's so worried about everything. Because yes, the kingdom of this world is shaking. If your trust is in the kingdom of this world, you better be anxious. You better be fretting because, well, it's shaking and there's no hope there anyway, so you better be worried. And then we were talking and... And it just occurred to me, you know, like we've been living life for so many years and we've gone through difficulty, we've gone through all these things. And God has been faithful through all of it. But there's one word that came in that somehow derailed us as believers. It's this word COVID or corona, whatever you want. It's just this one word. I'm going to say the C word. <laughs> COVID. You know what I mean? God has been faithful up to now, before March and whatever, and He's always come through. He's always provided. He's always guided. He's always done all this thing. But wait, wait. We have to do things different now because of COVID. It, doesn't it? You know, I was just thinking about it. I'm like, it doesn't make sense. Why all of a sudden, it's even bigger than what we've ever faced or whatever. My son asked me the other day, we were, we were busy swimming and, he, he was, uh, and, and he's got a floater thing. And he's like, what happens if I take this and I go into very deep water? Will I float? So I'm like, yeah, of course you'll float. Because it's not based on the depth of the water, it's based on the floaty that you've got. And isn't that what Jesus is like? It's not based on the depth of the struggle, how hard it is and, and all that. It's based on who you have with you. Jesus hasn't changed. And we get to do life with Jesus. Someone once said, Christianity is like this. We mostly don't know where we're going, but we know who we're with. And that's life with God, and we can have righteousness, peace, and joy. And we should be living 
this way with God. I want to take you to Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. And, and uh, I want to challenge you, go there in your Bible. It feels like I'm the only one turning in my Bible uh, here. But it says, uh, verse 14, Matthew 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put a light... or. or uh, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We as Christians were never meant to be second-rate citizens and second-rate uh, people in our country where, oh, shame, they love Jesus. Poor Christians. That's not what God has ever called us. He's called us, you are the light of the world. He said, shine. You don't light a candle and then put it under something to, 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 to hide the light. No, that, that, that's not the, that isn't the purpose of a light. So in our lives, we should be shining for God. We should, people should be looking at it and being like, okay, I realize COVID has hit. I realize a lot of different things have happened. Maybe you've even lost your job. Maybe you've gone through tough times or maybe you've had promotions or maybe whatever, but the circumstance doesn't really matter because when people look at you, when they speak to you, they should be like, wow, I need that Jesus. You know, God is so faithful. And we forget about God when we're going through a lot of things. God's word is clear. He will provide for all your needs. He will be there with you no matter what you're going through. He will give you the joy in circumstances even when you should be depressed. That is the God we serve. It's his promises. Psalm 79, verse 9. It says there, Help us, God our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive us our sins for your name's sake. This prayer of the psalmist, I'm just like, it's so true. Help us the glory of your name you see because God is 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 it, he desires your success and remember what I said about success it's success in the eyes of God God wants your success more than you want your success why because it's for the glory of his name he's put his name on your life and when when he comes through his name gets the glory or should get the glory. So God wants to help you more than you even want to help yourself because it's God's name that is on the line. It's His reputation. It's for His name's sake that He does all these things, that He cares for us. Because God wants glory for Himself more than you want even glory for Him or whatever. Because this, this God that we serve, He is so great. And he wants his glory to be seen. So God wants you healed. God wants you free. God wants you to walk in abundance of life more than you even want to walk in that because it's his name that is on the line. But we have a partnership with God. And I, I don't know how a God this great would choose me to partner with but because we mess up so much but he chooses it he's like let's do life together some people they have this thing of this sovereignty of God God's just going to do what he wants to do whether I'm there or not well God's got a plan and he's going to do things but you've got the choice if you're going to be involved in that he's not going to force you into anything He's not going to force you to experience his blessing. He's not going to force you into, into seeking him first and his righteousness and getting the provision that comes with that. He's not going to force you into that. That's the choice you have to take. 
you must deny yourself. That's your choice. Deny yourself so that I can have everything that God wants for me. This life with God is, is, is basically like a father or a mother washing dishes with their four-year-old son. <laughs> it's like me. Wash dishes and I'm washing and Malachi is washing and he's not really washing. I'm re-washing and rinsing and something breaks now and then and it's, it's a mess and there's water all over the floor and my wife comes like, what's going on here? And it's just a big mess. But I'm quite excited. I think it's great, you know, when I'm, when I'm not too tired and I'm not too frustrated. But God is never frustrated. He's never tired. You know what I mean? So he's always in his perfect way. And he loves that. And it's a bit of a mess, but he's like, oh, we'll clean it up. We'll do this. But we're doing it together. That's life with God. I, I don't have much to offer God. Actually, I think often I slow God down in what he wants to do. You know, it's like a parent taking their child for a walk. Oh, Gideon, you go for a run and you run with me, for instance. I'll slow you down a lot. <laughs> you probably won't even finish the race if you do it with me. You know what I mean? But that's like it is. Like God, he can do things so quickly, but he chooses to do it with us. And man, we get tired and we mess up and we fall and we do all this. But he's like, but let's do it. Come, let's go. This is life with God, and we need to understand it because it makes all the difference. I want to go to a very well-known scripture verse that we, know, that we know very well, Acts chapter 1, verse, verse 18, not verse 18, verse, verse 8, and, and it says there, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. We're not doing this life by ourselves. And what I've found in life, talking to people, is, is you start off and you depend on God for everything, all the wisdom that you need. I know even, even taking over the church uh, you know, it, it, it was a very scary task. A lot of different new things to do and whatever. But soon you get into the hang of it and, and, uh, and the decisions become quite easy as such for, for, for various things. Oh, I've done that before, I've done that before. And I think, you know, in, in business, people that, that, that uh, are there, they learn things and it becomes quite easy. The, the unfortunate thing is that we sometimes get caught into be like, well, I know how to do this. And we stop talking to God about it anymore. I have done this before. And we, and, and, and we miss out on what God wants to do. And, in, and instead we, we miss out on the fullness of God for our lives. And we start to make decisions based on what has been and not based on God, what is on your heart. Because God wants to work through you, no matter what you are. If you're in full-time ministry, if, you, if you're uh, um, in the working world or whatever, I don't want to say secular because everything's actually ministry, but God wants to work through you in every situation, wherever you are. But the thing is, often we're just like, well, I've done it before, and we, and we cut God out of the picture. But he's like, let's do this together. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. But we need to know the heart of God. We can be friends with God. I shared it before. Jesus says, I no longer call you slaves, but I call you friends. Because everything that the Father has showed me, I show you. We can know what God is thinking. But we often cut him out of things because, well... Well, God, your wisdom doesn't really apply in this situation because, you know, COVID changed things <laughs> or whatever. And yes, sometimes the choice will be, I, I'm not going to take that promotion. 
because I believe this is what God wants for me. And I believe that God wants his glory to shine through me here for a bit longer. But sometimes the choice is, let me take that promotion because God wants to use it for his glory even more. We need to ask ourselves the question, what is on God's heart? What does God want from me? And his Holy Spirit will empower us. I want to challenge you when, you, when you're standing in queues, because there's many queues nowadays. I don't know where all the people are coming from or whatever, but there's queues everywhere. And, uh, and, and if you're like me, you're introverted, uh, so sometimes it's quite hard to strike up a conversation with someone. But I want to challenge you, when you're in that queue or when you're with someone or whatever, just ask God, Lord, what is on your heart for me here, wherever I am? And just ask Him because it opens up the door. Because often we're not listening to God because, well, we're not listening to God. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're just carrying on with our things. We're doing our daily things and whatever. But the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and you're going to, be re- and, and, and you're going to receive power to be a witness. So it's God's heart that you are a witness wherever you are, but we often miss it because we're not listening. So just take a moment when you're in the queue the next time and just say, God, what is on your heart for this situation? Or these people here. And maybe you'll strike up a conversation and then you'll hear someone's story or they've got, yeah, I've got a sore hip or something. And you're just like, I've got the power of God within me. So pray for them. Maybe someone's just lost their job or whatever and maybe you're not able to give them a job but you can be like, let me pray for you. There's power. We've, we've forgotten the power that we have as believers. We want to just live in this world and just carry on like the world carries on. And we forget that we have Almighty God with us. The next decision that you have to make for your family or the next decision that you have to make in your business or your workplace, you've got God with you in that. So you need to ask yourself the question, God, what, it, what, what do you want from me? I was speaking to someone this past week and they, and they lost, they, well, they almost, they were involved with Black Friday and all this and, 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 they, and something happened and they almost lost four million worth of brand due to something that happened. He stopped and he said, God, help me. Help me sort this out. Amazingly, everything happened. No money was lost. Why? Because he took the time to be like, God, what's on your mind? What's going on? Help me here in this. So many times we, 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 we were suffering and we're going through things that we shouldn't be going through. Why? Because we just didn't ask God. So many times we're so busy, Angus Buckham once shared, he said, in, in my older years, no, in my younger years, I was so busy, I did everything, and I did everything about 10 times because I got it wrong nine times, and then I learned, and then I did it 10 times, and he's like, in my older years, I've learned to sit and ask God, and then I do it, and I do it once, and I save a whole bunch of time, I'm more efficient. How many of us, for the decisions that we make, we just... God, before I make this decision, what is on your heart? God is faithful. He wants to speak to you. You've got the power of God within you. Use that power. We shouldn't be... We shouldn't be just walking around and and just surviving in this life. God should be walking working through us. One thing I've been challenged on, and it's just because I don't, I don't pray enough for people. Lord, why am I not seeing more miracles? Well, are you praying? You know? Are you going and are you actually believing and you're actually declaring healing on the person and miracles and all this? Or are you just hoping that sovereignly God will just do something? 
You know, God wants his light to shine. God, it's for God's glory. He wants his glory to be seen in the nations, and he wants to use you and me. And I'm not always talking about the big elaborate things. I'm talking about the one-on-one -on -one conversations that you have. Maybe even with your kids. Maybe even with your friends. Maybe with the one stranger that's there and someone that you'll never ever see again. You just give them a bit of truth. You have the Holy Spirit empowering you. And if that is not life, and I'm not even talking about eternity, what we have in eternity. I'm just talking about this life yeah, in this age. If that is what we get to experience, then why are we so miserable? Why are we so depressed about things? Why are we so anxious? Why are we so full of dissatisfaction? But we could have God with us in everything. Lord, I simply ask this morning that, that you open up our eyes so that we can just get a revelation of what life with you looks like. Lord, we know of your word. It says, it says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways higher than your ways. But still we choose to do things the way we think and the way that we want to do it. Lord, because we just don't have a revelation of what it means to be living this life and partnering with you and doing this life with you in relationship with you. So I ask, Lord, that in people's hearts all over this auditorium, Lord, that you will just plant that seed or drop that revelation that we get to do life with you. We get to be empowered by you. We get to know your thoughts and hear what you are thinking about us. And even if it doesn't make sense, Lord, we, we, we just do it because we trust you, because we seek you and your righteousness. And we know, Lord, that you will come and you will sort things out and you will work and you will get the glory. Lord, I ask that the pride in our lives where, where, where we can say that, well, I did this and I did that, Lord, that that pride would just become nothing because we're just like, well, it was God. I actually couldn't do it. And we'd realize, Lord, that life is far more exciting. It's far greater. It's got, it's got purpose. It's got fulfillment when we do life with you. So I just ask, Lord, that we would just get a revelation of this, that we would do life with you. And constantly we'd be asking you, Lord, what is on your mind? What are you thinking? What do you want me to do here? How do you want me to do that? What do you want me to say? Lord, we believe that we will move in step with your spirit. Lord, we want to shine your glory. That's our desire in this life. So yes, Lord, we choose to deny ourselves. We choose to, to, to deny ourselves of the instant gratification, Lord, that that steals away the eternal glory. We say, God, we want your way in our lives. Reveal this to us in Jesus' name. Amen.